We have Betsy Myers who's joining us along with Michelle. Michelle, it's so great to see you again. I think we missed you last time. Thank you. I'm so happy to be back. And of course, Betsy is with you this time. We're going to talk about a couple of books. And, you know, just to give readers uh, and and listeners sort of an idea of of what happens, sometimes books are so personal and they, they affect you at times in your life where you might need to put them down for a little bit. And and thank you to the two of you. That's exactly what happened um, to me, which I haven't talked about this on the radio yet, but um, my dog passed away kind of too suddenly for my liking. Um, and it, it was just, it was, I was just starting the art of racing in the rain. And because <laughs> Colleen takes such good care of me. <laughs> <laughs> nope, and nope, no. She I walked in with does. the book, and she just shook her head at me. And I'm like, oh, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and she said, yeah. Yeah. yeah watching right. out for our mental health. Well, yeah. however, th- that doesn't mean it's not a great book it's for a, a lot of people. It's a fantastic book. Mm-hmm. And so we, I did put that down. And, and that's one of the things I think that happens because books are so personal. Mm-hmm. And because there are times where... A story maybe is just too close to your story that you you have to put it on the on the shelf on the nightstand for a bit and come back to it. But that doesn't mean that we're not going to talk about that book for a bit. And then we're also going to talk about another book that you brought in that made made me so happy. Oh, good! <laughs> I love 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 this book. It's so it, it's called Make Your Bed. It's um it's very short. It's something that I will now I will own this book and read it every time I'm feeling like. Maybe I can't get through something because it's it's uh, U.S. Navy retired Admiral William H. McRaven. It's little things that can change your life and maybe the world, and it really is a special book. But first, Betsy, and uh, if you can talk about the art of racing in the rain, the beginning was beautiful. It was, yeah. It, um, and when Michelle said that we can't read it, I was like, oh, but it's not about yeah. death. It really isn't. It really and isn't. Because I don't read anything that's like that and mm-hmm. that doesn't have happy endings, too. So I think it was because it was from <coughs> the point of view of the dog right. mm-hmm. that it was just too close to me at the time. Um, but it's definitely one that I'm going to pick back up. So can you give everyone kind of a, a, a summary of what they were reading and some of the, the things that you loved about the book? Um, well, the best part that I thought was, obviously, it's from the dog's point of view. So you're not going to get the entire story because, you know, a dog's not going to be everywhere of what's going on with this family. Right. Um, and there's heartbreak in there, but it, to be, I'll just ruin it for you. I think it has a happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> I like happy endings. I exactly. didn't get to the end of it, <laughs> but I'm and looking what, forward to it. You're right. And what the dog talks about in the beginning um, is if he just had opposable thumbs, he would his life would be fantastic. I mean, he's so mad that the chimps got it. <laughs> and, he didn't. <laughs> and what he could do if he just had them mm. um so that that always drew me in plus it's a movie so mm-hmm. that's why we also picked it because it's an older book i mean 2009 it's not that mm-hmm. old i guess but mm-hmm. um um because it's a movie so and i always love to compare the two yeah and, and have I've, you seen the movie yet i haven't i had the rest no. of today <laughs> off and i was gonna go see it and it's gone oh oh no, no. I'm like darn it so i'll have to wait for it on video <laughs> <laughs> well i have to admit i only read like one chapter because right. i was walking to work listening to it and i i'm crying and crying and <laughs> mm-hmm. and uh by the fact that he he was excited because uh, he says when a dog passes away they become a man and I look at my dog differently now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I, I love my little Rosie. Um, so I think that, and in and in combination, I I didn't re- buy the book, but there's this whole book about animals and emotion, and basically they put dogs under um, like a CAT scan, mm-hmm. and they found that a dog's brain lights up better for petting than for food. Yeah, yep. and oh, the vibration that they put out yes. is even stronger than anything else. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so when so I kept thinking about that. The little bit of this book I read, it it was a really in, I've never read a book from the dog perspective, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> but it's really nice. So I I really enjoyed a dog's purpose, mm-hmm. um, oh, yeah. which oh, yeah. was just a lovely it was uh, just a lovely story too. But this one. Um, I was kind of reading some differences between, uh, you know, like w- when people compare the two, and it really is different. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. definitely different. Um, so, I- I- as far as you know, when people are experiencing, when you know, when the loss of a pet, I think is um, is something that we're j- we're giving more attention to, and I think that that's needed. Um, but do you recommend this for people who are still grieving? 
I'm gonna I guess not. Too. I guess not as fresh as, as yours. Right, right. I would yeah. definitely do it later. Okay. And it took me a while to read. Um, is it W W Bruce Cameron's books or Dog's Purpose? Yeah, oh, yeah. But we've been watching the movies too, so we saw mm-hmm. Dog's Purpose, The Dog's Journey, and mm-hmm. maybe read it or watch, or watch it with friends. Yeah, yeah. right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. With the so support you can system. Discuss it. Yeah. So you can all discuss it. Well, so it, it, it you know you would still recommend it, and I I actually I can't wait to read it. I just <laughs> know that it's going to be a little bit of time. Um, but and I again, didn't, and I didn't read it actually. I listened to it. Okay. So that that, and that made probably it made it easier. For me too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The probably though the the good the, I w- the the piece I wanted to point out in this though, and this is you know this is our ninth book in this book club. Oh my gosh, which is kind of amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and and how books really are, how reading really is so personal. Mm-hmm. You know, I think sometimes people look at reading as a chore, <laughs> unfortunately, yeah. mm-hmm. or an assignment, mm-hmm. or they go. Oh, yeah, it's something I have to do. Or I even hear people think in retrospect, oh, I had to read that book in college or I had to mm-hmm. in high school. But when you when you have a, a moment where you go, wow, this really is a personal connection that I'm having to the characters, and you do that with everything. Mm-hmm. Um, you put yourself into these these stories so easily that I think that that really is a testament to the power of reading. Mm-hmm. We have right. a poster at the library, and it's a quote from um, – Oh my gosh, um, uh, Martin, who wrote the Lord of the Rings, mm-hmm. or not Lord of the Rings, oh my gosh, Game of Thrones. Yeah. <laughs> and his quote goes something like, a man who doesn't read lives one life, or a woman, anyone, you know, a person who doesn't read lives one life, and a person who reads lives thousands, thousands. of lives. Yeah. And I love that. And when I see that at the library, it's right on the reference side of the reference desk. I think, that's right. Yeah. And, th- and that's so cool. Right. And I think, you know, I think the other thing, too, especially how important it is for kids to read, because it's the very beginning of empathy. Mm-hmm. And that when you're, you're being able to relate to someone that is, in a lot of cases, doesn't even exist. But you can go, oh, I understand what they're feeling here. That is, that's something that, you know, is beyond the um, ABCs of it all. It right. really is important in making you... Um, a better person mm-hmm. and yeah. reading is so important and you know i i wonder you know they're passing these laws like for the third i don't know if you've talked about the third grade law mm. like if you can't read to a certain level i think you you have to fail third grade and it just like oh it, it makes it such a chore for kids and now they're going to be afraid of reading yeah. um afraid of failing afraid, afraid of, of failing. failing and reading and really reading should be their escape and their fun and and so it's just uh, i don't know if we're doing the right stuff yeah but, you know right well, um, I, that is a really good point because if you're looking at something as here's the cutoff and if you don't make it, you fail, you go back, mm-hmm. that is going to increase a lot of anxiety, I would For say. For kids, right? And mm-hmm. reading is hard. My, I, I'm a librarian and my kids were slow readers. Mm-hmm. And that, same with me. And my son hates to read. Yeah. He absolutely, and then he, he considers it work. He considers mm-hmm. it my work because he always sees me reading or listening to audiobooks or whatever. And so yeah. he's like, oh, that's work. I don't want to do it. Oh, that's what mom has to do for work. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, no, this is actually enjoyment. I don't have to do this right. for work. Yeah. <laughs> I have the best job in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I get to read. <laughs> You're not having to read like diet, you know, dietary studies. No. <laughs> that's your <laughs> job. Work. Yeah, would that really would be, be work. in trouble. <laughs> well, that was the book, Art of Racing in the Rain. I, w- I think um, when I do read this again, we'll just kind of slide it into yeah. the next book club. Good. Because I, I think it's it's definitely worth it, and um, and it, it looks like just a beautiful book. Um, we have the book that you dropped off, though, after the fact uh, for me to, to read. And I think this is another one of those personal books that so many people can take from. It's a very short read. It's, uh, as we, we pointed out, it's called Make Your Bed, Little Things That Can Change, uh, change Your Life and Maybe the World. The thing I loved most about this book, Michelle, was that it's not like a coffee table um, don't sweat the small stuff. Yeah. You know, it's not like one of those, hey, you're going to read a bunch of quotes. It's not an affirmation book. Right. It's something, it's it's this man's story told through um, some pieces of advice that he gave to a graduating class. I mean, he ha- gave a con- commencement speech, and it turned into a very short 125 pages, I believe, mm-hmm. um, just small book of something that I think people could read every year and get something new out of it. I try to read it. And sometimes I even, you know, I copy just the um, the chapters down. Mm-hmm. It, it's just little reminders like, you know what? Make your bed. I do that every yeah. day. And just mm-hmm. like, you can't go it alone. 
even if you just get to chapter two, like I just love his chapters. Yeah. And I think it speaks to me too because my father was in the Marine Corps, mm. my brother was in the Marine Corps. So I was very much raised in like a military type of yeah. household. And so to um so it just really speaks to me. Like it's pretty simple, but it's really the core is like teamwork mm-hmm. and don't feel too sorry for yourself, yeah. but also accept when you need help. Yeah. I, I, and I thought of your son because yeah. of what he's going through through boot camp. Oh, yeah. And he's I mean, he's almost done crossing fingers. Oh, my gosh. But, you know, I was thinking about that, too, reading this. And, again, a, a, another very personal thing. And anybody who has friends in the military or loved ones or you've – to to have this man tell some of his stories, which, quite frankly, his life is absolutely amazing. He could have – seven or eight maybe ten books Mm -hmm. that are all of different things that have happened and he you know brings them into this small book of oh make your bed and and that is a a task completed start your day with a task completed and I've never thought of it that way that I've always thought of it as um, if I make my bed every morning I know at least I did at least I got at least one thing done but I've never thought of it as mission you know, oh, right. look at this. I, I'm checking something off the bus, I, right. the, the bus, the list. <laughs> um, but I loved that aspect of it. And then he went on to talk about, you know, as someone who was a part of um, the Navy SEALs, he has just an incredible life. He shares a bit of a story about um, being the person who was responsible for making sure that uh, Saddam Hussein mm-hmm. was being treated well mm-hmm. while he was in custody. And he noticed something about this dictator, Saddam Hussein, which he references quite a bit in these pieces of advice. But he noticed that he couldn't help but sort of chuckle that Saddam Hussein never made his bed. Right. (laughs) And it was so interesting because you're like, well, of course, everyone's made his bed for him. Right. And the expectation, but I I really appreciate it. I think that was the chapter about standing up to bullies. Yeah, that was another piece there, yeah. Yeah, he talks about all his different experiences, and you're like, yeah, that's right. I mean, basically, he's a bully mm-hmm. with a national, with a, with a country behind him. And he and so to, to watch him lose his power, mm. and for this um, gentleman to like, or, you know, for the can what, what was his, the navy seal yeah he you know the admiral to just hold not hold it over him but like almost like stand in reckoning to mm-hmm. him yeah like, he did nothing now and and to hear him explain that the idea was to see this new to bring in this new regime for the country of iraq who had been i mean who had been just completely ruined by yeah. Saddam Hussein. I mean, he was the butcher of Baghdad. Mm-hmm. He he did so many awful things. And they wanted, and the, the powers that be in the, um, in the American government, the idea was to bring in this new re- regime and to say, look, now you have this, this time. And in the world of, of maybe um, of assault or of in, in, in court, you call this the victim's impact statement. Oh, yeah. And they wanted this to happen for this new regime to say, look, you can stand up to your bully. And they couldn't. Mm-hmm. And after, because of so many years of tyranny, they walked away, not being able to stand up to him. But this gentleman, um, the admiral, wouldn't let that happen. And so every day he was making sure that he understood you are no longer in charge. And then to see the way that that happened with such, ob- obviously, it was done with taste and respect. Mm-hmm. But it, it happened. Yeah, it, it standing was, up to the bullies. He stood up, and many times I think there's bullies in all of our life. That's mm-hmm. why I thought this was a kind of cool book with where your son is, and and just reminding all of our kids who are back in school who won't be listening to the show but might listen later or their parents. Podcast. It's a pretty <laughs> simple book, and it's like I told my yeah the podcast. The, uh, to, these are just some simple rules like yeah. ask for help, stand up for bullies, don't give up. Mm-hmm. Like in his stories made me realize, whoa, he went through something harder than I ever. Oh, have. sure. Like when he was in like when he had the parachute accident. Oh, terrible. And he's basically wishboned by the parachute. That was I, hard to read. Oh, yeah, it, was. it was so hard. But but he did it. And he had people around him who helped him. 
And then be- he's back at it again. And so you mm-hmm. just think it wasn't just like preachy, do what I say, no. but look what I've done. And all, and these little, these these ideas, these um, rules that, uh, you know, weren't really rules, just, you know, some advice to follow. The chapter on um, don't be afraid of the circus, which oh, yeah. was all failure can make you stronger. And, you know, he goes on to really talk about every one of us is going to experience failure. We're all going to be in the circus. Mm-hmm. Um, but don't be afraid of that because it, it will make you stronger. And, and some letters that I've received from my son that have been so nice as a mom to read Mm -hmm. (laughs) because he's talking quite a bit about all of these extra things, you know, um, that he has to do because in, you know, in the military, you're all together. Mm -hmm. And and, uh, the Admiral talks about that in this book as well. But he talks about it and he writes in there, um, well, we failed, but it's only going to make us stronger. And I'm thinking, oh, my gosh. I mean, in the 18 years of this child, <laughs> that you're trying so hard to, like, make sure that he's getting that. And, you know, as moms, you guys understand this, where I'm, you, you feel like you're a broken record. Right. And you're saying the same things at all the time. And it takes, you know, a couple of weeks in the military, and they understand it. <laughs> it's amazing. I remember when my brother wrote his letters mm-hmm. and – um. Yeah, so he, you know, he's in Marine boot camp, and the first letters were just, he's scared, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, and I also realized what a terrible speller he was. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> nice, <laughs> but he was he was scared, and he wasn't sure if he was going to make it. And I wished I had saved the letters he had written because by the end he was a Marine. Yeah, and you it, saw it, and it's in the if, if it's Army, the, you know, they like they're all they're all Army, mm-hmm. and it's just and, and I think you have to go through that really hard spell together mm-hmm. to emerge on the other side, and some people don't make it. Yeah, and so it it would you know it's just like that perseverance that we try to teach mm-hmm. our kids or grit or right. whatever the word we want to use so this is a book you would recommend for all ages or even yeah. reading it to younger kids maybe you know not all of the parts because some of them get the wishboning part was very <laughs> hard to read <laughs> it was, I had I was. To read it several times to understand exactly yeah. what was how going how this on happened oh gosh oh, it, was yeah. it was hard to read um but you know sharing it with people um, bringing it ev- into classrooms, you know, and, and really teaching these soft skills that I think it's uh, interesting because when you think about military life, they're all learning hard skills, yeah, very hard skills. Everything is physically, you know, it's physical endurance, it's mental endurance, but they're learning all these soft skills that you don't think mm-hmm. about as um, a byproduct, the stuff that sticks with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah you, it gives you a different sense of the people if mm-hmm. you don't have anyone in the military in your life and you read this book i think it will really teach you respect and or not teach you respect but just give you a really solid understanding yeah. to kind of the transformation that happens to people oh and i love it yeah good i'm glad you liked it i, I like, did this might help thank Crystal. you it really helped me too and so i wanted to mention we had a caller that said the art of racing in the rain does have a limited run Friday through Wednesday at the Bay Theater in Sutton's Bay. Thank you. September 13th through the 18th. Um, so check that out. So oh, you can yeah. go see that. And that's <laughs> that was the book that I'm going to go back to reading uh, <laughs> when I'm not so sad about my dog. Yeah. But The Art of Racing in the Rain, it really does look like a beautiful, uh, beautiful book that you probably should read. And then also picking up Make Your Bed, which is another just list of um, uh, just philosophies for mm-hmm. a, a really good, well-lived life. Mm-hmm. I loved it. I know. I'm gonna. I keep telling myself I'm just gonna buy a stack and give it away to any graduates I know. That's such oh, a, good that's a good idea. Like here you go. Here's all the your graduates. Presents. It's I all, love that. It'll take you an hour to read. Yeah. And I took a different perspective on the first part with the make your bed part. Is that I love that he said a task completed mm-hmm. for your day. But I always do it at the end of the day. Like when I go to bed, my bed has to be a certain way. It, oh. It's never made in the daytime. But when oh, I go to wow. bed, it has to be made. So the sheets, so I have the perfect amount on yeah. the right side because we have a new Finland and he sleeps with us. And <laughs> <laughs> so I have to. And he's probably know, on the bed during the day too. I have oh, to jockey yeah. for a position to get my sheets. And the <laughs> same thing with my son. He does not make his bed. But when he goes to bed, I'm like, please just get under the sheets. Just have make it. Around it yeah. Isn't that certain funny? Way. Oh, and that's so it's fun. the end of your day. So I love it. Feel complete. Sleep. It yeah. seems it's so nice. simple, but very, very good, um, you know, lessons and very complex. So I would recommend that too. Before we have to go, do we have another book picked out? Oh yeah. So the library book. <gasps> Isn't it funny? It's a library book called the library book. Um, 
So here it is. It's Susan Orleans. She will be coming. Um, I brought two copies for you. Um, she will be coming here, part of the writer series. And um, I think the date is November 16th. Oh, great. And um, so I thought we can talk about this book before she comes. Yes. And exciting part, too, if you go to the event, you automatically get entered to be one of um, a member of our Friends of the Library group. Oh, great. And they're just a, they're a group of people anyone can join. And they just help us get stuff done around the library. Um, this is a nonfiction book, but I but it says it's mesmerizing. It's gotten great reviews. It starts out with a fire mm -hmm. in um, Los Angeles, but um, I'm excited to read some nonfiction too. I thought I thought it's we'll try it. Yeah, yeah, and the, it's it's gotten great reviews, so we're really excited at the library. So the library book. So we'll be back to talk about this next month, and you can get your tickets to the National Writer Season. Uh, excuse me, series to see uh, Susan Orleans. And before we go, though, you oh, have yeah. lots and lots of stuff going on. You oh have an gosh. ice cream social at the East Bay Branch. You mm -hmm. have fall foraging with clay bowers yeah, betsy knows more about that what is going on betsy oh yeah he's he's fantastic he absolutely loves the outdoors and um just wants to share his knowledge of it and so people can you know forage for nuts and berries and leaves and everything you know in case in case you need to i love yeah. that and just for fun and just for fun yeah a yeah. patron asked us for this uh, we had a mushrooming and the mm -hmm. patron's like oh can you do foraging and we found someone and yeah. so we have foraging and we also have a big thing. Our director is retiring. Yes. So we're having a little party for her uh, Sunday, September 22nd, from 1 to 3 at the library. If you'd love to come by and wish her well on her exciting retirement. Oh, we'll, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, that'll be happening, too. And get That sounds great. And yeah. a chili cook-off in October. Chili so cook-off. It's I'm so there. fun. It's our third annual. So it's you can compete for free and you can eat for free. It's October 20th, but you can register um, anytime now but before the a week before the event and just go to tadl.org slash chili for that specific chili for that but if you want to look at all the yep. events there's a great events tab there I and mean, you have something going on every literally every night the library is the community center it's the mm -hmm. heart of the community and so many great libraries in our area under the Travers area district library east bay fife lake interlock and kingsley peninsula has a beautiful library that oh uh, yeah recently it reopened opened. it's beautiful uh, and then of course the main library branch in traverse city thank you so much for coming in and oh, for going you. that extra mile for the two books this time i really <laughs> appreciate that we'll take a quick break and you can listen to this um this podcast don't forget about that listen after the show and uh and you can find those at crystalfrost.com